Hi cuties! Welcome back to my channel, The Royal Diaries. Today we're interviewing Salima of Sultry Vamps, the wonderful designer that creates very, very cute floral and pink girly outfits. I have known her for several years. We've done several fashion shows together. She is a wonderful, um, wonderful, smiling, beautiful woman and I'm really excited that I can actually sit down with her. I can't wait for you to all meet her. You can check out more info about her and her brand in the link below. I just want to take note that since we are in quarantine and so we are actually doing a interview via Skype. Bear with us. Hopefully it works out and let us know what you think. <laughs> Let's see. This will just start recording. Okay, so how about you tell everybody your name, where you're from, and then the name of your brand and we'll kind of jump into everything there. <laughs> so my name is Salima. I am Julie from Lake Elsinore, California, and um, the name of my brand is Sultry Vamp. And how long have you, uh, your brand has been in business and you've been cultivating your brand and selling it and all that good jazz? About 2011 when I was uh, in school and I had a thought to do Sultry Vamp uh, before I started school, but I didn't have like a I'm ready to now step out and go to a convention and just try my <laughs> luck until 2011. <laughs> <laughs> now there's the in my head, which was like maybe 2008. And then there was the, okay, I'm, I'm actually going to do it today. 2011. <laughs> so you went to school for fashion design and you yes, they did. learned. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Cause you yeah. know, some designers self-taught so I went to school I was like trying to double check because you know it makes a difference on what um, you learn how you how you do things so I figured out yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of those thoughts that you know that was that was on the plan you need to go to school and figure out what you're doing because you don't know Jack you just know that you want to make pretty clothes but there's a lot more to it than that. And mm -hmm. business is not your strength. No. <laughs> you're, you're an artist. <laughs> you need to wear yeah. many hats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like fashion is definitely a business. And, like it's art, but it's also business. And you got to get people to buy into your art, which is. Yeah. probably the toughest part about it so what is the inspiration behind your brand I know it's very girly I know I feel like there is um, Lolita inspiration behind it um just kind of that tea time princess yeah. wear is kind of the vibe I get from it since I've seen yeah, it we've done actually it. this together <laughs> I think it probably stems back from when I was young, like maybe like five or six. And I'd be thinking, I want to make something for my Barbie and I want to make something for me. Granted, the stuff I was making <laughs> back then was like a sock that I had cut the bottom out of. And I was like, it's a dress. <laughs> oh, I did that too. <laughs> <laughs> Super DIY makeover, you know, just since I was a kid and I... What categories do you do? I know I, we've done lingerie shows together, regular, ready to wear kind of fashion shows. Yes. I've seen you do long yeah. shows. So like, what do you just do any and everything? Or do you have certain categories you like to stick to? I would say I'm pretty much like a lifestyle because mm -hmm. I, well, I could, based on my lifestyle, you know, I'm a reenactor and then I also cosplay and then I also... I'm a little extra fashion-y kind of girl. I need something that's going to transition through whatever mm -hmm. I'm doing. You know? <laughs> I, I guess there's a little... I do make costumes for people who reenact. Um, I do special occasion. Mm -hmm. I do lingerie. Mm -hmm. And lately, some children's wear because, oh. hello, we <laughs> now. And we're in quarantine. So this might have changed a little bit because of, um, you know, the quarantine and everything that we're having now in 2020. But um, yeah. typically, yeah. how many fashion shows did you do? Would you do a year, um, you know, or try to do a year? Um, or if you didn't do fashion shows, maybe you did collections instead. Um, still did collections and photo shoots and capsule collections. Like about how much would you do for 
um, how many fashion shows you would do or capsule collections or both, you know, whatever you got time for. (laughs) (laughs) So on average, I do maybe four or five fashion shows every year. And um, when I first started out, I only wanted to do one every year I was like look yeah. I, I'm just figuring this out I just want to do one show well but then like that kind of changed really quickly where I was asked to do a couple of shows here and there so I walked one collection all year long mm-hmm. and I figured that and then um after a while uh, I would get asked to do some I guess specialty collections like for instance when we would do like lingerie shows for yeah. conventions or um some reenacting or just anything and that would yeah. do this for that so it started to depend on how many opportunities were out there I think that the most I've done is maybe like seven or something a year still not too many but I just didn't want to stress myself out so I yeah. think four is comfortable yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a bit crazy yeah <laughs> because there's, there's only 12 months so. <laughs> that goes into those collections even if I'm walking the same collection they're still yeah. like you know you got to get models you got to get your comb and wash all your wigs again and yeah. they're just <laughs> There's and a lot. Like, hope none of the models flake. Hope the models fit yeah. into the garments. Like they didn't like punch their measurements a little bit or anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, they bring the right shoes. Words. <laughs> they got your taxes to think about. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I rather not stress myself out because I'm a kind of a laid back person, and mm-hmm. um, you know, I'm really talkative, but I am really introverted also, and uh, I prefer to just like chill, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, no, I, I get it. <laughs> like, it's a stress, like, it's stress, but it's like it's good stress at one point, but then there's a point where you're like, no more. <laughs> yeah, Is there any certain fabrics that you consistently like working in, um, or don't? Don't like working in you're like I'm never touching that again or but you have like a favorite kind of fabric I would go I'm gonna guess okay it may either be lace or chiffon so let me see what if I'm gosh if no it's chiffon you're right chiffon <laughs> yeah <laughs> like I feel like chiffon lace um charmeuse makes sense too I've se- I have seen you do a lot of sh- like make male <laughs> I feel like ball get like gowns you make charmu set up, but you probably I mean you have a lot of stuff. So you have a lot. Yeah. You have a lot. You even make your own (laughs) you make your own you wear your own clothes. It's all you have in your closet, right? That's still true. (laughs) I would love to see the closet. I um you know you don't know how, how many people I tell that I know you and like no I'm like I know somebody that literally she makes everything that she wears, her whole closet. Is nothing oh, yeah. but her color. I mean, it's literally goals. Like that's what I want in my life. Okay, so here are my reenacting clothes. These are um, 1860s ball gowns. So okay. This is mm-hmm. One I wore when I was uh, pregnant. So it's a cape. It requires the use of a huge crinoline. There we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's pretty cute. Here's like my skirt dresses that mm-hmm. I wear, shirts, and clothes that I don't wear anymore right here. I might take them apart and upcycle them because okay. I do upcycle my own clothes. But <laughs> this dresser, it's mostly full of socks. <laughs> so have you um, at any point in your career worked in the fashion industry, like on the corporate level not too much i mean the most i've done is uh i did work retail a little bit with robinson's may way back in the day when robinson's may was in business that was a while ago i couldn't tell by the title of that store i did also work as a designer for uh believe a christian brand Mm -hmm. and then i worked uh as an intern for Brian Lichtenberg, where I was just like office bitch. <laughs> All the fun times being an intern. Learn anything that you wanted to, uh, that you can incorporate in your business. 
from retail, I learned um, what makes things visually look appealing to someone. Mm-hmm. Like you're walking by yeah. and you want to stop there in the first place. So mm-hmm. I learned that it, there. Do you have any advice for any aspiring designers? So I would say save some money. Save some money. Mm-hmm. It's a lot more expensive than you might think or you know i knew it was going to be expensive coming into it but um there's all the little hidden fees the little things that you think you have a budget for and then oh dang we totally forgot now we're out of thread like now our we scissors are blunt or we need a better machine because this one died or, you know like things yeah. you don't know no. You know, I had to replace an iron. So just have some money set aside to help. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the best thing is we are living in a time where we can look online for some help or some guidance if we're ever lost. And that's something that the 90s didn't have for sure. (laughs) Yes. Um, Familiarize yourself with the industry. Uh, learn the terminology and uh, if you don't know how to do a flat belt seam or something you know there is a video on YouTube yes do you have any um, exciting things coming up any final thoughts I I am designing a new collection and um, it's a very early 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 stage move mm-hmm. forward stage. <laughs> inspiration (laughs) and um i'm excited about it i hope it comes to fruition sometime next year probably spring summer oh that's great i can't um, wait to see it actually in front of me right now is part of the mood for it let me unpin this this a, a scroll where it says a very merry unbirthday but (laughs) <laughs> it's all it's um embroidery so oh, I'm gonna do all different embroidery techniques it's how i practice my stitch work and stuff mm-hmm. nerdy grandma lady <laughs> oh my god okay well my lovely dear where can we find you online where are you online your website your facebook instagram all of those Places. This is Facebook, Instagram, Sultry Vamps at Sultry Vamps or Salima Vainglorious. I actually took down my shop, like I said, while I was doing yeah. my mom thing uh, for this last year and a half. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much for talking with me today. <laughs> um, I'm going to put all of uh, Sultry Vamps info in the bio so you guys can check her out online and see the rest of her collections i hope you enjoyed everything that we talked about today thank you so much for talking thank to me you. i will talk to you hopefully very soon have a great rest of your day rest of your weekend take care say hi to the hubby kiss the baby for me <laughs> i will thank you thanks again Ginger. <laughs> no problem bye